Hello everyone, welcome to the Nature of Biology, where you will learn the diversity of life. For today's lesson, we will talk about the parts of the microscope and its function. The learning competency of our lesson is to identify parts of the microscope and their functions. Our lesson objective are the following. Do you know that living beings have a unique classes? There are some small, big, and they are made up of cells. Most cells are so small that they cannot be seen by our naked eye. But did you imagine how these small things can be examined? Mula sa mahuhusay ng mga inventors ng kanilang panahon ay nakabuo sila ng tinatawag na microscope na kung saan ang maliit na object ay kanyang pinapalaki. A microscope is a laboratory instrument used to examine objects that are too small to be seen by our naked eye. Microscope comes from the Greek words micros meaning small and scopian which means to look. It's a tool which can help you to see tiny objects and living organisms. Microscopy is the science of investigating small objects and structure using a microscope. Microscopic means being invisible to the eye unless aided by a microscope. You ever wondered how microscope is being invented? And now let's proceed to the history of the microscope. On 13th century, ang spectacle makers na gumagawa ng mga lenses for glasses ay nakagawa ng isang microscope na tinawag nilang flea glasses. Na wherein, ginagamit nila ito para mapag-aralan ang mga maliliit na insekto. Mula sa malikhaing pag-iisip ng mag-amang Zacharias Janssen and Hans na ay bumuo ng kauna-una ang microscope noong 1590s. Ito ay binubuo ng mahigit isang lenses. Na noong taong 1625, si Galileo Galilei ay nakabuo ng isang prinsipyo tungkol sa microscope. At sa ginawa ni Janssen, kumuha siya ng idea para magamit para ma-improve ang kanyang invento. Leo Galilei microscope is known as compound microscope because it consists of more than one lens. He added a focusing device to his microscope and of course went on to explore the heavens with his telescope. In 1665, Robert Hooke had access to many microscopes available in Royal Society of London. He examined everything he could get his hands on. When he examined a very thin slice of cork, he thought that the close-up views resembled small anterums, and this was the start of the word cells. At para sa kanya, ang mga rooms na ito ay parang rooms na maliliit sa isang monasteryo. Ito ang nagbigay buhay sa pagdidiskobre ng mga iba't ibang cells. Noong 1674, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, isang Dutch scientist ng dugo, yeast, insects, at marami pang maliliit na objects. Anton van Leeuwenhoek is greatly improved lens grinding and first to see bacteria, yeast, blood cells, and life in a pond water. Dahil sa kanya, binigyan niya ng buhay ang mundo ng microscopy. 1903, Richard Sigmund D. developed the ultramicroscope that could study objects below the wavelength of light and he won the Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 1925. Fritz Zernig ay nakainvento ng face contrast microscope noong 1932 na nag-aalaw ng study ng mga colorless at transparent biological materials for which he won Nobel Prize in Physics in 1953. Little was done to improve the microscope until the middle of the 19th century when great strides were made the quality instruments like today's microscope emerged. The prototype microscope was credited to Joseph Jackson Lister in 1830 which reduces spherical abbreviations of the chromic effect. He shows several weak lenses used together at certain distances that may result good magnifications without blurring. 19th century, companies in Germany like Zist and an American company founded by Charles Spencer began producing fine optical microscope. What makes a microscope determine how clearly a small object can be viewed? Microscopes have different resolutions and magnifications in order for it to magnify an object. Magnification describes how much larger an object appears when viewed. Ibig sabihin, ito ay pinapakita niya kung gano ang isang object ay pinapalaki niya mula sa kanyang normal na kaanyuan. 
magnification ay nakasulat sa bandang side ng isang lens. Value nito ay maaaring 4 times, 10 times, 40 times, or 100 times. At tuwid, ito ay nangangahulugan na ang isang object ay pinapalaki ng ilang ulit. To calculate the total magnifications of the compound light microscope, multiply the magnification power of the ocular lens by the power of the objective lens. For example, 10 times ocular lens and a 40 times objective lens that may result the total of magnification of 400 times. Solution or resolving power. It is the capacity of a microscope to distinguish finer details of an image. There are different types of microscope which differ in their magnification and their resolving power. First is the optical microscope. Ito ay binubuo ng visible light na para makabuo ng isang imahe. Gamitan ito ng glass lenses para i-magnify at i-resolve ang isang image. Image can be formed and viewed through the use of the eyepiece. Ito ay binubuo ng dalawang klase, isang compound and stereo microscope. Compound microscope uses two or more double convex lenses to magnify the object. It can magnify object up to 1,200 times. Stereo microscope or kilala sa tinatawag na dissecting microscope, it magnifies the object 100 times and gives three-dimensional image. Electron microscope uses high-energy electron beams to form an image. The image that was formed can only be viewed from a photographic plate on form of computer screen. The image magnify can reach up to 2 million times. There are two classification of electron microscope. First is transmission electron microscope. The beam passes through the ultra-thin sample. The image magnified and focused into an image device such as fluorescent screen to be examined in fine detail. Secondly, is scanning electron microscope. The beam bounces off from the surface of the sample. Thus, the image provided is three-dimensional. Now, we are done to the different types of microscope. Now, let's discuss the parts and the functions of the different parts of a simple or compound microscope. First is eyepiece or ocular lens. This is the part used to look through the microscope. The tube or lens tube is connected with the eyepiece and its main task is to hold it. Revolving nose piece which holds the objective lenses. It is movable and it can resolve the objective lenses depending on the magnification power of the lens. Arm. This is the part connecting the base to the head and the eyepiece tube to the base of the microscope. The main function of arm is to support the head of the microscope and it is also used when carrying the microscope. Objective lens are the major lenses used for specimen visualization. 3 times, 4 times, or 5 times are also known as a scanner. Low power objective or LPO is marked as 10 times or 12 times. While the high power objective HPO is marked 40 times, 40 times, or 60 times. Stage ito ang platform kung saan hinahawakan niya ang mga specimen or sample para sa viewing. Stage clip ito ang nakaibabaw sa stage na kung saan siya yung umiipit o humahawak sa specimen slides para hindi ito pagalaw-galaw habang iyong binuview. Diaphragm, ito ang kumukontrol sa pagpasok ng ilaw sa isang specimen. Controls the amount of light that passes through the specimen. First adjustment knob, ito ang una mong gagamitin para i-focus ang image under a scanner and low power objectives. Line adjustment, ito ang ginagamit para i-focus ang image under high power and oil immersion objectives. Source or mirror, ito ang napuprovide ng ilaw para sa specimen. It could be lamp or a mirror. Base, it is the supporter or it supports the whole microscope. And now, it's time for us to make a Ngayon ay gagawa tayo ng essay tungkol sa paggamit ng microscope. Ikaw ay gigradan batay sa isang rubrics. This is the question. In this time of COVID-19 pandemic, how useful is microscope in detecting the viruses? Yung panahon ng COVID, gaano daw kaimportante ang paggamit ng microscope sa pag detect ng mga virus? Mula sa napag-aralan nating mga iba't ibang klase ng microscope, alin doon ang ginagamit para mag-detect ng mga virus?
para sa ikalawang gawain, you are going to describe the following scientists below and tell something about their contribution to the development of the microscope. Kopyahin ang nasa larawan at ilalagay mo kung ano ang nagawa ng mga iba't ibang scientists na makikita ninyo. And that's it for today. I hope that you understand and develop your understanding about the microscope. Hanggang sa muli at magandang pag-aaral mga bata. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you will be updated para sa bating bagong video. Mabuhay at magandang araw!